There are no shortage of struggling artists out there, both past and present. So we are back with a part two of the top 10 scary times artists went insane after creating their masterpiece. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Ernest Hemingway. Ernest is, of course, one of the most renowned writers in history, but let's start off his story in the late 1950s. During this time, Ernest was, for the first time, having trouble with his writings and needed a little assistance. According to those he asked for help, during this time he seemed a little disoriented and confused. Some might even say a little paranoid as he was worried about being followed by the FBI, which apparently later after his death would come out to be true to some degree, but that's an entirely different story. In December of 1960, Hemingway was admitted to the Mayo Clinic using a fake name. He would stay there for two months under the guise of being treated for hypertension, but it is said that he was really there for help with his depression. Apparently here he underwent electroshock therapy at least 15 times. He was released later with a clean bill of health, but sadly he would continue on a downward spiral. In April, his wife Mary found him holding his shotgun in a self-menacing way, which left him being rushed to the hospital again and being treated with the same electroshock therapy. Just days before his death while on a trip, the plane stopped to refuel and Ernest tried to walk right into the plane propellers, which thankfully a pilot was able to stop just before it happened. On July 2nd, 1961, Ernest would go on to take his own life with his shotgun. We now know that Hemingway suffered from severe depression, paranoid delusions, and bipolar disease exacerbated by a history of alcoholism, severe head injuries, and a genetic disorder of iron metabolism known as hemochromatosis. And we also know that seven of his close family members also passed away in the same way as he did, including his father, sister, brother, and later, his granddaughter. In our number 9 spot today, we have Edgar Degas. Edgar Degas is known as one of the most influential artists of the 19th century thanks to his incredible creations that are full of lighthearted scenes. These creations, however, are a stark contrast to what is said about the life of Edgar himself. For a lot of his life, Edgar apparently was quite introverted, and this left him hiding away at his studio for most days, while he would only walk the streets of Paris at night. He had a small circle of people that he liked and trusted, and outside of that, he completely closed himself off. In the 1880s, Edgar began to really suffer from bouts of depression and also aimlessness. And in 1884, in a letter, he wrote, quote, I'm blocked, impotent. I've lost the thread. In the last years of his life, Edgar unfortunately lost his eyesight, which would only prove to further isolate the artist. This coupled with how it left him unable to create art in the same way he once did would be a blow to anyone. But for someone like Edgar, it was devastating. In our number eight spot today, we have Richard Dad. Known for his painting of supernatural scenes, Richard Dad is another artist who really suffered with his mental health. The detail-focused painter is said to have first had a sort of psychotic episode or mental health crisis while on a boat on the River Nile. It is said that during this period he was thrashing about and claimed to have thought that the ancient Egyptian god Osiris had taken a hold of his mind. Later when he returned to England, his health would only get worse, and sadly this would turn fatal. Richard would go on to believe that his dad was the devil, which resulted in him taking the lives of his parents. After this, he fled to France where he attempted to take another life, this time of a tourist. He of course was caught and ended up being sent to a psychiatric hospital, and it is actually there that he created many of his best known masterpieces. Our best modern guess of what was happening within Richard and his mind is that he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, which some say he may have been genetically prone to, but at this point, it isn't quite clear. In our number 7 spot today we have Andy Warhol. When it came to Andy Warhol, whether it was silk screens featuring 100 Marilyn Monroe's or 210 Coca-Cola bottles, he loved multiplicity in every area of his life. When asked about how he decorated his home, he shared, quote, just with junk, paper in boxes, things I bring home and leave around and never pick up. While many see this as the quirky artist being, well, quirky, when we look further into his life, we see and understand things from a different lens. It is said that even his art shows his engrossment with abundance. He was comfortable with abundance. So hoarding, which is a persistent inability to part with belongings, is classified as a disorder, and it's clearly different from collecting because these items aren't displayed or specifically collected. Another part of hoarding is in relation to the distress that hoarders feel, which is something that Andy himself wrote about when he said, quote, I'm so sick of the way I live, all of this junk and always dragging more home, just white walls and a clean floor. 
That's all I want. We often overlook things like this, like hoarding, because of TLC shows that make it seem much more trivial than it is. But it is clear from his life and all of the things found after his death that Andy too was suffering, just maybe in a different way than some of the others on this list. In our number six spot today, we have Joan Miro. Joan was a Spanish painter, sculptor, and ceramicist who received international acclaim for his surrealist works, although his style is a bit difficult to truly pin down. Behind his life, Loved art, however, was the artist who was suffering from depression for most of his life. It is said that he would weave in and out of the bouts, like many other people also experience as well. In interviews from the 1930s and later, it is said that he also expressed a sort of contempt for conventional painting methods, calling it a way of supporting the bourgeois society. Apparently, a low period in his life is actually what ended up leading him to a life of art, however. A bad bout of depression coupled with a bad bout of typhus is what the artist needed to encourage him to drop out of business studies and pursue art instead. In our number 5 spot today we have Jackson Pollock. Jackson was an American painter and figure who was important for the abstract expressionist movement. Many people know him for his famous drip technique and just his unusual but fantastic entire technique and approach to painting in general. Of course this technique doesn't tickle everyone's fancy, some didn't appreciate the effect it had, but hey, art is certainly subjective. Aside from his polarizing style, Jackson is said to have been quite reclusive as well as a bit volatile. It is reported that he struggled with alcoholism for a fair share of his life, and in 1938, he suffered a nervous breakdown. Sadly, Jackson's struggle with alcohol led to his untimely death at age 44 after he passed away in a single car accident where he was the driver. It serves as a reminder to us all that alcoholism certainly is an illness as well, and it isn't one to take lightly either. In our number 4 spot today, we have Yanulis Chalepas. This skull Sculptor is known for his incredible modern Greek art, but he is also known for his debilitating mental health struggles. It is said that for years he would create something, but then destroy it almost immediately. It is said that in 1878 he suffered a nervous breakdown, and on top of his habit of destroying his creations, he began to also attempt to take his own life. Apparently his hardships were only later exacerbated by his mother, who blamed his illness on his sculptures, which led her to try and keep him away from them. It is no doubt that he lived quite Quite a difficult life, but on top of everything we've already talked about, he was also diagnosed with dementia at just age 36. In 1916, it is said that his mother passed away, which finally allowed him to go back to sculpting and to the work. He did so after a long time of inactivity, and many experts now agree that these creations were made with more freedom than his previous ones. In our number three spot today, we have Paul Gauguin. Paul was an extremely influential artist, and he was also a good friend of someone who was on the first part of this list, the infamous Vincent Van Gogh. Paul worked with multiple mediums, he could paint, sculpt, he used ceramics, prints, and more. He worked to help develop renowned styles and movements. This is all to say that he was a brilliant creator and artist who did so much for art, all while having his own personal struggles. Not only did he suffer from severe bouts of depression, but he is also said to have at one point attempted to take his own life. Paul is another artist who is severely underappreciated until after his death, which is certainly a tragedy and an all too familiar story. In our number 2 spot today we have Sylvia Plath. Sylvia's poetry helped to shape 20th century literature, even though she didn't leave a massive body of work behind. Her simple but extremely powerful words created such imagery, and those works often alluded to her own personal struggles with her mental health. Sylvia is said to have first attempted to take her own life at just age 20, after which she was diagnosed with depression. After this, she would continually go through major bouts of depression like many others do. After her death, the poetry collection Ariel would be released, and within it, there would be multiple references to experiences in her life that frustrated her and in the end led her to take her own life. At just 30 years old, Sylvia would pass away in this manner, but not without leaving a legacy behind that, heartbreakingly, many people can strongly relate to. In our number one spot today, we have Virginia Woolf. Virginia is undoubtedly a literary giant and is known for being a leading voice in the sort of stream of consciousness style that is seen in novels like To the Lighthouse and Mrs. Dalloway. Behind her artistry and brilliance, however, is quite an interesting personal life that is riddled with struggles and hardships. Virginia had a lifelong struggle with her mental health, and this was seen in her periods of severe depression, as well as more than one attempt at taking her own life, which in the end would be the way she passed away at just 59 years old. Many people point towards a horrific event she endured early on in life as the source of her mental health struggles, and while that 
that is potentially quite likely, it's impossible to pin one point or one moment or series of moments in a person's life that could lead them to have struggles such as Virginia's. It is clear, however, that this of course did affect her, and by her own account was something she carried with her for her entire life. It is something that led her to become an advocate for protecting children who were vulnerable to similar circumstances. While she was still reeling from and struggling with her own experiences, she dedicated herself to helping others. The sign of a truly incredible person. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. What's up? What's up? What's happening? Let's go. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> I can't speak today. Like, good morning. I am blocked, impotent. Imp like, I might as well just go to sleep at this point. <laughs> Jackson is said to have been quite reclusive as well as a bit volatile as well. I said as well twice. This sculpture, this sculpture, this sculptor.